Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, and I'm back two days in a row with another small kitchen counter thrift haul. Wow, look what I've got. We've got depression glass, and we've got spode English transfer, and uh, some lampshades. Let's go see. That you saw the other day. I already talked about goofus glass. There it is, but a much better look close up, all cleaned. It's pressed glass. This is a rose and lattice pattern. And it's cold painted. Now nobody took this out in the backyard and spray painted it. That's the way it was manufactured and that's the way it was sold. Sometime around 19... Oh... 1915 to the end of the 20s. It was very cheap glass. And they had all kinds of fancy names for it. I forget what they called it. I think they called it Egyptian glass. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but they did not call it goofus glass. The goofus comes from people realizing that the paint chips off very easily. And people started calling it goofus and the name stuck. And so collectors today call it goofus glass. It's hard to find it without paint loss. The paint loss on that isn't that bad pretty evenly distributed distributed now here are some spode plates now I realize with plates you're talking about something that's probably gonna sit on the shelf for a while until somebody looking for this pattern searches finds you and then purchases because you have what they need these are the same pattern uh, these are little demitasse saucers of which there are Five. These could be saucers, or they could be little uh, bread and butter, little roll plates. There's no like indentation for the saucer, but not all saucers have that indentation for the teacup to sit in it. Uh, the sides are gently sloping upwards, so that does indicate saucer. We're going to call them saucers. Spode sells pretty well. This is the buttercup pattern, and we can see here Copeland, Spode, Made in England. Crazing is normal on most of this stuff, but you don't want stains. There are no chips. So there are three of those, and uh, what did I say, five of those. Again, the same pattern, buttercup. So these are all listed, and I'm perfectly fine with them sitting on the shelf and waiting until someone comes along because they need them to complete their set. This is also spo spode. Eight really pretty plates in excellent condition, no chips, no cracks, and a very nice pattern. Cracks, no, that's crazing again. That's okay, we just don't want to see somebody's old gravy stains in the cracks. I'm sorry, in the crazing. That's kind of not very appetizing. Anyway, the pattern is called Sydney. And again, we can clearly see Copeland English Spode. This stuff is all, I, I'm not an expert on any of this, but I think this is all uh, probably 1930s, 40s. I don't necessarily think that it's any newer than that. 
and a uh, really nice pattern here on those eight plates. Then back here, I know we're nowhere near the gravy season. Uh, I don't eat gravy in the summertime. I eat a lot of it in October, November, December. So two gravy boats, boats English transferware. Well, one is English, one is Scottish. Which one came from England and when, which one frame came from Scotland, can you tell? That's the English one right there. It's a nice pattern. Not really flow blue. It's not flowing enough to be flow blue. We'll just call it English, English transfer wear. Uh, heavily marked as pieces from England are. Hallmarked rather. England we see embossed and then Stoke-on-Trent. I'm sorry, Savoy, uh, Stoke-on-Trent, England, no chips or cracks or staining. Uh, I love gravy boats. It's nice to find them when they're not chipped or with broken handles. Okay, here's another one. And this one is uh, Scottish. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. Uh, but we see made in Scotland and it's... BP Company, uh, blah, 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 blah. I know what that is, but right now I forget. It is listed uh, in eBay on, on my uh, auction site. So if you want to see, read more about it, or see better pictures, you're welcome to go and, and check it out. I'm sorry, I just completely forget what that BP stands for, although I did look it up. There's a mid-century, 1940s, 50s, pink ceiling shade which you all know what these are you grew up in houses with these in in every bedroom or hallway so it would hang this way the glass rod through there a screw on there and then the light bulbs i won't pick it up it's heavy but anybody with a 1940s 50s house you need those uh to complete your your uh, light fixtures some of you saw this in my cart and it was connected to the lamp. The lamp itself was pretty junky, but the shade is excellent. These shades have value. This is green and opal cased glass. It's, uh, this will go onto a 10 inch fitter. And uh, for a student lamp or oil lamp, and uh, it's ribbed. And so that's really nice to find. And it's uh, chip, chip free. And you can see that's what it will look like when it's all lit up. So collectors of uh, student lamps and oil lamps are always looking for these shades. I think I paid ten dollars for this with the lamp. I'm going to recycle the lamp base. I just bought it basically for the shade. Look at that cream and sugar which is a superstar. These are beautiful. Let me get down where you can see them better. I absolutely love it. I just sold a beautiful gold embossed uh, salt and pepper shaker. Very similar to these. Uh, thickly, thickly coated in gold. This is this gold is not coming off. Uh, this won't you know, wipe off or chip off. Uh, it's just beautiful. And these are absolutely unmarked. Nothing on the bottom of either one. And they are in perfect condition. There's not a chip or a crack. And the gold is uh, solid all the way around. You've got this really pretty pattern underneath. Uh, and I love the green. Isn't that beautiful? I hope it's focusing. Really, really. Th this is high quality stuff, folks. Now you just don't, you know, when I come over for coffee and ginger snaps, you better put your cheap cream and sugar away and serve me from these. These are beautiful. Oh my goodness. This will make a Wawa cup of coffee taste like Starbucks. If you don't know what Wawa is, <laughs> Wawa is our little convenience store where we get, uh, I think you can still get coffee for about 69 cents. I don't drink Starbucks coffee. It's too uh, strong for me. Um, a cake plate made by the Jeanette uh, glass company. I must have sold about 12 of these. It stands on three feet. Can you see them? This was given away for free in 
sacks of flour. Yes, actually down inside of the sacks of flour during the Depression, the 30s. I feel like I'm shouting, and I don't mean to. It's the sunflower pattern. These came in pink and green. It seems as though the green ones are a little easier to find than the pink. Again, as I said, this is probably the 12th one that I have bought and sold. They must have been... Uh, people used a lot of flour in this area. So that cake plate is also in the old curiosity shop for sale. Here's a trivet made by Wilton standing on four feet. And we'll turn it up so you can see it. I guess that's upside down. These are little brooms. I don't know. Can you see that? And made by Wilton. There's the Wilton name right there. That's nice. And then this, probably from the 1940s, based on the style and the color of that lid. Uh, Farley, what do you think was inside of this? Well, it could have been chocolate sprinkles. I did find one of these with the paper label on it and the little chocolate sprinkles were in it and it was this identical little jar which is very cute. That would be great in a 1940s kitchen. Put anything you want in there. And then finally back here is a stack of one, two, three, four, five very heavy depression glass grill plates. This is in the cameo pattern and they date to the 1930s. So let me stand up and show you what they look like. Oh, by the way, these are in excellent condition. Not a chip or a crack. No rough roughness where you sometimes get roughness right here on the grill. And they're super clean without utensil marks. They are yellow. It's hard to see, I think, but they are. I think you can see it better when they're down here. And the cameo pattern has a little dancing woman. She's right there. But it's hard to see her because she, part of her body is obliterated by the rim of the plate. Let me turn it around to the back and maybe you'll get to see her a little easier. Uh, let me hit the focus. Hold on. There she is. You see her? She's got her arms up. There you go. See her head and her arms are up and she's holding a little scarf or something that she's dancing with. And you can see her legs there. Okay, so the sometimes it's called Cameo Ballerina. You'll see it listed as that. Okay, heavy, heavy grill plates. Let me refocus here. And so, uh, again, the Cameo pattern is a pretty pattern to collect if you're interested. You can get a head start there with all those wonderful plates. All right, backing up, I think I've got everything. It is all currently listed in the old Curiosity Shop. The link to the shop is in the description box below this video. Tomorrow, I'll be back with a shop along video. So I hope you'll tune back into my little channel. I thank you for commenting and subscribing. This is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.